So we're back. Oh my God, what a nightmare. Apologies, I haven't done an upload for about a month. I did plan to do an upload for you guys every week, um, but it's, I've had massive problems. Oh, it's been a nightmare. Um, just goes to prove how quickly things can go wrong. I'll start from the beginning, so um, yeah, basically all started from uh, had the three the two tangs in and the Emperor Angel all sweet all fine no problems good health um, and I noticed the water going cloudy now my water with that, uh, that aquamedic 36 watt UV sterilizer on the system my water went gin clear which is what I was after you yeah, crystal clear water and um, yeah, and it was perfect. So look, I started noticing the water go cloudy after the UV had been on a week or so. And um, I thought, this just isn't right. So check the UV and noticed that the bulb wasn't illuminating the outlets. So you thought, okay, the bulb might have popped, whatever. Let's have it apart and see what's gone wrong. So disassembled it all and noticed that the electrics had all burnt out. Um, it sprung a leak inside somewhere and it shorted the, 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 uh, the electrics out and the bulb had uh, popped. So <clears throat> we exchanged the unit, took the unit back to uh, All Things Aquatic, they arranged a, a replacement and that came. Um, in the meantime though, I had a phone call um, from a marine shop, not All Things Aquatic, uh, it's annoying because I, I do like to buy all my stuff from, from All Things Aquatic in Hawkehurst because of their quarantine process, which I'll go into later on in the video. Because um, I don't have a quarantine set up here and um, yeah, it's just handy for me that they, they do a really good quarantine process over a number of weeks. Uh, it's like a three stage thing and um, yeah, great. Anyway, I had a phone call from Marine Shop saying that they heard that I was after a Stars and Stripes puffer and that they've got one in, do I want to come and have a look at it? I thought, sort of, great, okay, let's go and have a look at it. So jumped in the car, went and had a look. Awesome, perfect, perfect um, example of what I was after, perfect specimen. Um, the right size, just a little bit smaller body-wise than an egg, they're about three inches long. Um, showing good health and they not been in the country that long, uh, about a week, they'd had them about a day or so. Um, so we went and had a look, I thought, well, I can't get him yet anyway, but not with this UV issue. I was waiting for a replacement UV steriliser to come in. Um, let's go and have a look at him and, uh, and see what's what. So yeah, fine. Um, he's perfect. I said to him, can you hold him? Uh, I want to see whether he's eating well and no disease you know, pops up at all. Um, and I need to wait for my new UV to turn up. So the new, v t new UV turned up. And uh, we got that on, got the water gin clear again. Um, we paid him another visit to make sure he's all okay. Yep, yeah, fine, no, no issues whatsoever. Um, now it was a massive gamble for me. Like I said, I do always like to buy my fish from All Things Aquatic because of the quarantine process and I, you know, I don't have a quarantine set up here. And it's the risk you take, we've all done it. Um, any of you guys watching that, that are into Marines, or if you're a new starter, this is a must. Uh, with any marine system, reef tank, whatever, you've got to quarantine the fish. Um, and if you don't, it, you, you know, you've got a high risk of, um, or a high chance of, of getting a, a disease in the system and all your fish going down with it. Now, this is a mistake I made. I should have known better. I've done 20 years in this marine game and, you know, it's one of those things you think, well, we'll take the gamble um, and see what's what. And uh, yeah, we've got the Stars and Stripes puffer in. Um, fine, brilliant, settled in lovely. Um, his name's Jaws because he's an absolute nightmare when it comes to uh, feeding and they're so greedy and you're going in the tank, he just wants to go for your hand straight away. It's not too bad, but uh, yeah, when he, when he comes to, to hoovering the sand out, vacuuming the sand which I do once a week you know he's uh, the first time I've done that what an experience that was anyway um, back to the story so we got him in and after about a week my wife noticed that 
you know, she's, she mentioned, hasn't he got a, a, a little bit of white spot on his fins? And I was thinking, do you know what, you're right. He has got a few little sort of, this white hazy, not, not like your typical white spot, sort of sugar grain size. It's just like these white imperfections on his fins. And uh, I was thinking, okay, we'll just monitor it and see. And I had a close, close look at all my other fish. And I thought, oh shit, my blue tag has got a few white spots on it, which it didn't have before the puffer went in. So um, I thought, oh my God, what are we going to do now? Um, so I thought, I'll do what I've done previously with my Red Sea Reef for 250. We had a little bit of an outbreak of white spot. And um, I used Polyp Labs Medic, which is a reef safe white spot anti-fungus disease treatment. And it, <clears throat> it worked really well. Within a week, the spots had gone and the tank returned to normal and it, it, it never had white spot ever again after the two years I had it. Um, so it's very expensive, the Medic. Um, so I thought, well, let's try that with this tank. Uh, I know it's not a reef tank, but don't, you know, it doesn't have to be reef safe. But going down the road of copper treatment, I didn't want to do because with copper, you know, some fish are very sensitive to copper. I know puffer fish are very sensitive to copper and young tanks. Uh, and also it has a, a detrimental effect to your biological bacteria. It says it doesn't, but I'm, I'm sure it does have a bit of a dent in your, uh, your numbers, or your, your colonies of uh, good bacteria in your uh, media. So <clears throat> I thought I don't really want to put copper treat. It's just going to be a last resort. So we try the medic, we run the medic for the term it was, I think it's 10 days or so. 10 days in, it was worse. White spots were getting really bad. And uh, I thought, well, I've, I've got to take the plunge and, and uh, copper treat. So I bought uh, Seachem's Cupramine, I think it's called, yeah, Cupramine. Um, supposed to be very, very effective uh, by treating white spot. I was lucky, I'm so lucky this is not a reef system because uh, if it's been a reef, uh, whether these fish could still be here, probably not. Um, so, yeah, we purchased the, uh, the Cooper mine uh, and got it on. It's been about a week since I've been, uh, since I dosed. And it's annoying because you should have turned the UV steriliser off. Um, stop dosing no pox. Uh, hence why what you probably can't notice right now on the camera, but you will when I get the camera off the tripod. The, the water's all gone hazy. Um, yeah, it's just annoying. You've got a you know, no carbon, no UV, no no pox, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, annoying. My water's gone all hazy, which I hate. Um, but yeah, we're a week in on the treatment, and the white spots are pretty much disappeared. I think there's just one left on the, on the regal tang, um, which I suspect will drop off in the next day or so. Um, so hopefully we've nipped it in the bud. But the, the trouble I had with the copper was after about day two of dosing, uh, I mean the fish have been hiding in the rocks the whole time. Puffer fish has not been affected at all, just like this, just wants food constantly. Um, but the other fish have been hiding in rocks, darting around, flashing around, in, in, you know, sort of rubbing themselves and stuff. The typical white spot um, symptoms. But um, my yellow tang really did not like the copper. Um, had a really bad reaction to the copper. Gill movement was just like 100 times worse, really breathing heavy, swimming upside down. At one point he was upside down. There's no way to lie upside down his gills completely stopped moving and I thought that's it I've lost him um, for nearly a minute I was thinking like, I was just about to get the net out to get him out and then he, he suddenly come back to life again and um, started swimming but just swimming really disorientated not comfortable at all I was thinking oh, do I take do I put carbon in do I start taking the copper out and then risk obviously losing a lot to white spot it's a really hard decision I thought, well, the other fish are fine. If the yellow tang's not going to make it um, through copper, we'll, we'll end up losing the, the yellow tang. Um, so that's a, really a hard decision I had to make is, you know, do I take the copper offline or, 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 or persevere with it? 
I thought, let's just persevere it, keep it at 0 0.5 um, for the term, they say, and let's just hope and pray the yellow tank gets through it. And within a few days, after about day four, day five, he started to recover and started to, uh, I presume, get used to the copper level. Um, gill moving fine, and they've all returned back to normal. It's taken time, it's just been a slow, bit by bit, every day improvement. God, it's just, it's just anyone that keeps reef tanks or marine fish will know uh, the pain of if you've got a disease in the tank, how much it stresses you out. <clears throat> and that's why I didn't, haven't done a video, because just haven't been in the right frame of mind um, to do one. Um, I've got a friend of mine who's going through exactly the same thing. Um, she's got a, a, a seven foot fish owner system. She's actually got an eight foot as well. She's with the transferring stock over. And she's got a huge stars and stripes pup puffer um, and lots of large fish. And she's had the same thing. She's just introduced a emperor angel and um, boom, white spot. And she's done exactly the same process as I've done. Um, apart from she didn't use the, the medic because she'd not had good success with it before. So she went straight on with the copper. And um, oh, I'm not gonna get into it, but she's had, the, the, the tank's not well at all. Um, she's had ammonia spikes and, and all sorts. Um, and she's in the middle of uh, trying to rectify it. Um, but anyway, back to this. Yeah, well, I think we're on the right side of it. Um, this is just, just an experiment. This, sorry, just an example of, of what can go wrong. It can go wrong very, very quick. Um, my own fault, really. I should, I should have waited for All Things Aquatic to get my Sars and Stripes puffer in and for it to go through its proper quarantine process. I mean, it's not 100% that you're not going to get anything, but it really does cut down the chances if you uh, bring a disease into the system. Um, so every fish that goes in here now after this lesson, it's a hard lesson learned, will be from all things aquatic and go through their quarantine. Um, because we don't want to go through this again. Hopefully we can recover from this. Um, it doesn't rear its head again, this uh, nasty white spot. Um, but the fish all seem happy. They're all feeding well. Uh, the yellow tank's taken a little bit longer to get back onto food again, but he's day by day getting better because uh, he didn't eat for about four or five days. Um, but yeah, it's all returning to normal. Um, so let's get the, the camera off the tripod and show you this Stars and Stripes puffer. Um, he's uh, a little bit of an animal, as you can see. A typical puffer fish, always greedy for, for food. And um, he's a bit of a spirit as well. I'm trying not to uh, hand feed him too much um, because you know, he learns that the hair goes over the tank. Um, you know, food's... Uh, Food's ready to go in, so what, what we're not trying to do now is, is just drop the food in straight over without it. Because I have been hand feeding in muscle and stuff. Um, yeah, so let's get uh, try uh, camera off the tripod and uh, give you a closer look. Okay, I'm recording in just normal 1080p. Because uh, for some annoying reason, these new Galaxy S8s only give you 10 minutes and 60 frames a second. Um, yeah, it's annoying, but you know, here he is. His name's Jaws, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, he was, his fins were covered in white spots. I never saw any on his body at all. Um, but yeah, he's clearing nicely. The other fish seem fine, blue tang, or regal tang, if we're gonna call it, yellow tang as well. It's all looking at more healthy, a lot more healthy a week ago, you wouldn't believe. They weren't even out, weren't feeding. The emperor angel throughout the whole ordeal was um, not really affected to be honest. Which you think these fish are, you know, they're quite sensitive. You would have thought he would have uh, gone downhill quick, but uh, no, he. Uh, I think he had one, one or two white spots on his uh, on his back tail, on his tail. Um, 
yeah fine as you can see you pretty you can see now that the water's really hazy just can't wait to get this treatment done uv back on carbon in the uh sump and get this water back gin clear <laughs> such a character now this fish i swear he's grown so much in i've had him just over three weeks and uh he definitely put an inch on him definitely he's got an inch longer a lot fatter such a character I would have been so, so annoyed and upset if I'd lost this lot. Um, I know there's only four fish in here, but it's, these are such nice examples of these fish. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just so stressful when you get a disease. It makes you want to just, that's it, once you've got rid of the disease, just not put anything else in, because that's how it comes in. And you put a new fish in that's brought into the system. Um, see how hazy the water is there because wherever I go this puffer goes I can only imagine this fish is going to get huge and it's going to get huge quickly the rate of growth I've had is just uh, been amazing I, I, I reckon by Christmas this year this fish will be at least seven eight inches plus and i'm guessing but i reckon it'll be full size within a couple of years i'll just quickly show you down in the sump it's a little bit messy at the moment because uh with everything that's gone on i've uh, sort of let a bit slack a little bit on my uh cleaning regimes and everything obviously i'm i'm cleaning my sand through vacuuming the sand once a week, at least once a week, um, with a vacuum system straight into the sump, straight into the uh, filter socks, they're changed out regularly. Skimmer doing good. Nitrates. I haven't done a water change from day one on this tank yet. Nitrates, the highest the nitrates have been is 20 parts per million. Uh, I've been controlling it via Nopox. Start dosing Nopox, I can get 20 parts per million down to zero within about a week, 10 days. That is uh, like 20 mil a day, um, which is a bit of a heavy dose really. I, 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 you know, it is, um, I've had experience, you know, experiencing problems with, um, with the Nopox actually, and the skimmer. Um, just sort of the skimmer just going nuts but uh, we're just going to fine tune it hopefully I won't have to dose as much uh, on a regular basis we, once we get this copper and this white spot issue uh, sorted hopefully we can fine tune it to sort of like 5-10 mil a day uh, to keep nitrates down to near zero phosphates are, are showing near zero as well so yeah, we're doing well so far. I know obviously the bioload's going to be stepped up as the fish are growing, and we had had more uh, more fish. And we'll see. It'll be uh, a good experiment to see how low we can get the nutrients in this tank using no pox and no water changes. Um, at some point, I'm going to have to do you know some large water changes, but uh, let's just, just see how long we can go. It's been nearly six months. I think we're month five, something like that. The tank was running since September last year. Um, but yeah, it's mounted the controllers on the right hand side here now. We've still got to add a few more bits of equipment on here, but there's no rush. Probably a, uh, a good wave machine, wave pump to get some more circulation in the, in the tank. I do promise to do an update every uh, every week to uh, let you know what's going on and give you a uh, an update.
on different things and um, on different subjects as well. We're going to be doing a uh, voucher giveaway um, for a voucher at All Things Aquatic in Hawkehurst. Uh, that'll be on the next video next week. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wrap the video up and I'll report back in a week when we've got the uh, the white spot issue sorted and the uh, we start removing the copper. So fingers crossed, we're on the right side of this now. Hit the subscribe if you're new to the channel. Any comments you've got chuck them in the box below as always thanks everyone for supporting the channel and i'll catch you in the next one